you're speaking my language now because one of my favorite topics that I've talked a few times about on this podcast is, is hormesis, this kind of this idea of temporary metabolic stress, temporary challenges, and how those stimulate the system to make adaptations that ultimately confer uh, resilience or better health or better function. You know, right on. Uh, so like, for example, you know, one of the things I do in my eye therapy is I put people into blurry vision because blur for most people is I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to get injured. I'm scared. But actually when you go into your blur and I have reverse glasses that I actually give people and they have to walk and move and balance when they take those blurry glasses off, their eyesight is crystal clear. Wow. They also use prism glasses that actually shift people into different parts of their peripheral vision that they're blind about. They don't, they're not accessing peripheral vision. That scares the heck out of them. But mm -hmm. it actually what it does is it creates more mitochondria production, ATP. And when they take them off, their eyes actually reset back to uh, a higher functioning state. Mm -hmm. Eye patch is another disruptor. So when you start using an eye patch, uh, this actually disrupts your habitual way of focusing. It's another way, as you say, uh, creates more energy flow in the eyes and the brain. It's, it's so exciting to see these shifts immediately when you challenge a person's vision. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. So that was, that's more relevant to macular degeneration. Is that correct? Or, or is that kind of stuff also relevant to cataracts? How does that, the stuff you just described, fit into you know, some of the, the big three conditions? So the three anatomical parts, the macula, the lens of the eye, and the cornea are what we call avascular tissue, which means there's no blood supply that runs through those areas. They rely on it indirectly. So it's a, it's a vulnerable area where the metabolism shuts down. And when the metabolism shuts down, it basically deadens the tissue. Cataracts is an opacity that forms over on the lens. It's dead tissue. The macula, the same thing. You're, you're not getting the proper carotenoids, lutein and zeaxanthin, to protect the eyes from macular damage. I would say with uh, cataracts, it's glutathione. That's mm -hmm. one of the main ingredients. And then in terms of the cornea, you know, with all the digital devices and also the sympathetic nervous system overworking and stress, uh, metabolic imbalances, this creates a drying out of the cornea and imbalance in the tears. So in all of these, it's the same thing. If you stress the vision differently, it actually creates more energy flow. And I use light therapy also. We can talk about how I use color and light to stress the system. I have a very inter interesting story about how to use light and color. Yeah, I definitely want to talk a lot about light with you. That's, that's one of my big areas. But um, first, what about glaucoma? Does, does that fit into this picture as well? So in terms of glaucoma, that's based on a circulation problem in the drainage canals in the eyes. And um, basically what happens is the optic nerve shuts down its flow and it creates visual field loss. I call it the silent thief. Glaucoma is actually a circulation problem in the canals of the eyes. So when you use eye drops, that actually doesn't do very much. And the other thing is doing laser surgery, which actually creates a lot of scar tissue. So the idea is how can you increase the peripheral vision, the energy flow of the canals in the eyes? And again, there's so many different ways to do that. Definitely want to dig into the light stuff. But as, as you were speaking, something just kind of popped into my head. It's, it's almost like the eyes are like a microcosm of kind of the bigger picture of our entire body. It's like we... We obviously have to put in good food, good nutrition to our bodies. If you don't, then you start to get various metabolic diseases. You accumulate body fat, insulin resistance, um, you know, various other, all, all kinds of diseases that relate to, to poor nutrition. Um, you got to take your, your body to the gym and do some exercise, move your muscles. And you need to like not sit down all day and only kind of be in one particular repetitive movement pattern. Otherwise you start to get back pain and neck pain and things like that. And it's, it's almost like all of those same things are occurring in this microcosm of the eyes. Like you, you're, you're saying you obviously you have to put in the right nutri nutrition to the eyes. You have to give them the right nutrients to function well. 
you got to take them to the gym, meaning you have to do certain exercises with your eyes to stimulate them in the right way. And you have to not be what I would say is the equivalent of being sedentary and sitting in a chair all day, which is like what you're talking about, kind of looking at a screen all the time. Your eyes are in this very limited sort of movement pattern. Uh, and I mean, that's anyway, does that resonate with you? That's kind of how I'm seeing things. Yeah, that's how it is. And the thing is, our eyes are so unconscious. We don't, we're not even aware of that there's sensation in here. And, um, you know, when you go to the eye doctor and you're sitting in a dark room and the doctor's flipping lenses, which is clear, one or two, and let's say you're having a bad day and you choose number two and you get the lens and you put it on and you go, man, this is making me so dizzy. I'm nauseous. And the doctor says, hey, don't worry, you'll get used to it. No, thank you. I don't want to get used to funneling my life through this filter that you're giving me, making me nauseous. I'll say one more thing. When you look into the retina, you're actually looking at the brain. You're looking at the systemic health. You can pick up things like diabetes, hypertension, even Alzheimer's now. There's a retinal scan that you could do to pick up that, uh, that Alzheimer's, the fatty deposits, so the eyes are kind of ahead of what's going on systemically and metabolically. It's a holographic window that you can look into to see this is what's going on systemically and metabolically, and then you can treat it that way. It's not just an isolated system. It's separate from the body. And that's what mm -hmm. I learned in school. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's like because the eyes are, or certain parts of the eyes are avascular tissues and more susceptible to damage, it's almost like, the canary in the coal mine in a way, like it's the first place to start to get damaged. Right, exactly. It's, that's why when you do a retinal exam, you can pick up things. And when I do, when I see diabetic retinopathy, I say, okay, let's look at the insulin level. Let's look at what you're eating. Let's look at your obesity. Let's look at your, you know, your... another thing that's a buzzword now is nitric oxide. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of that. So in terms of the eyes, when you start adding nitric oxide, it actually can induce glaucoma. It can reduce inflammation in the eyes. It can reduce dry eye. So what are ways that you can get nitric oxide? Well, one way is getting UV light into the eyes. That's one way to increase. I'm sure uh, there are ways to increase, increase nitric oxide. I'd love to hear that. But it's a really important for retinal health. And now we're in controversial territory because there are so many, I mean, this is something that comes up a lot for, for me and the, the people that I work with, the, the members of the Energy Blueprint program is, Oftentimes I'll get questions from people who um, have cataracts or, or macular degeneration. And I, here I am, I'm telling people work on your circadian rhythm habits, morning light exposure being a, a very important one of those habits. Um, get outdoors, get natural light. And, um, and then it's, there's this conflict because a lot of these people are being told by their, their eye doctors, hey, avoid sun exposure, avoid UV light. Um, the, the bright light from the sun is, is harming your eyes. So uh, I always, you know, as with everything, I, I never, whenever somebody has any sort of medical condition, I always say, well, you know, always, you have to listen to your doctor's advice. I'm just here to present, you know, the science of how this particular habit pertains to health more broadly, but it's, I'm not prescribing it to treat a particular medical condition. Um, so what's, what's your take on this whole light thing? Should people be getting sunlight in their eyes in the morning? Uh, absolutely. We are heliotropic beings. We go towards the light. And light is a food. And when it enters the eyes, it activates the photoreceptors and sends impulses back to the brain. That's how we see. There's actually about 25% of the light that enters the eyes goes through this pathway that activates the hypothalamus and the pineal and the pituitary. So we need light to see, and it's very important for our health, it balances our endocrine system, our nervous system. Now, in terms of uh, what you're saying about getting natural sunlight, we need ultraviolet light. You know, there have been studies out there that actually show that if you don't get enough UV light, now you got to substitute it, or you've got to supplement with vitamin D. Isn't that interesting? That industry now is like, okay, no, all UV, but now go buy vitamin D. Right. So it, it, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, and it, this, is a, this is a big pet peeve of mine as well because so many people are now of the mindset that the benefits of sunlight can be reduced down to just vitamin D. 
And people don't realize that there's so many other mechanisms and pathways that the sun is affecting us beyond just how it affects vitamin D levels. And one of the things you just talked about is, is how uh, you know, UV light directly in the eyes is uh, affecting nitric oxide levels. That's right. Cardiovascular health, the immune system, and we could go through the list of all the benefits. Mm -hmm. So the idea is the mo moderation. I think, you know, I live in the desert southwest when I'm skiing up in Taos, which I did the other day. I was wearing my polarized sunglasses. I'm up at 12,000 feet, you know, hiking up there on my skis. And so that's cool. Or when I go to Hawaii and I lead dolphin swims and I'm on the ocean, I'll wear my, my sunglasses. But we need light to balance our mood, our pineal gland, our circadian rhythm. And you know, it's really interesting when I work with light therapy, I give people the colors that they don't like. So there's a color machine I use and the colors they don't like actually opens up their vision and opens up their health. So it's another way to challenge their, their eyes and their body by giving them the colors that they don't like. And it's tell, really- tell me, tell me more about how, how does that work? Okay, so how that works is that, so if we go back to like the Egyptians, the Romans, the Greeks, Greeks, the Native Americans, the Mayans, they were using light therapy to heal the body. And in my field, there's actually a way that you can put different frequencies of colors into the retina that stimulate the photoreceptors that have become desensitized to light. In fact, certain colors will reflect toxicities, dental problems, toxicities, like if you're, if you're um, sensitive to green, for example, you may have certain toxicities in your body. It picks, up, picks that up. So when I give people different frequencies of colors, I call it the rainbow method. We look at red for two minutes and orange and yellow. And they might say, ah, I hate red. I don't want to look at red. I'll say, no, let's stay with it. Because what that's going to do is that's going to open up your retina and your vision. And that, that's what happens. A lot of times they will look at the colors they don't like. And afterwards, they can read 2020 on the eye chart. Wow. So it challenges them. And we're not just going to use the colors you like and you're comfortable with. We're going to give you the colors you don't like. And that creates more balance, more versatility, more neurogenesis. You know, it, it's it, it like the mitochondria get activated. So it's, it's very potent to use light therapy on the eyes. I mean, it changes a lots of things besides eyesight. Fascinating. And is, is there a way for people to use that in any way in, uh, on, by themselves or do they have to go to a clinic yeah. and see an expert to, to do that sort of thing? So there are ways that you can actually go out and get colored lenses. You know, there are different companies that sell it. Uh, I use these colored gels that I have made up. You know, they're just masks. And uh, there's a way that you actually look through each color for maybe you know 30 seconds and then you take a break and then you do palming so you're resting the eyes and then you go on to the next color orange and then yellow so you know it's very easily directed i even have people do it with an eye patch so they'll do it with each eye separately or they'll even do it with the reverse glasses so now they have blur and the color therapy so talk about challenging their current status quo and yeah. again at the very end it just creates more energy flow in the eyes duh it's going to work really well in restoring your vision hey there this is ari again one more quick thing before you go just make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Energy Blueprint, and also make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's iTunes or Stitcher or anything else. Hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and I will see you again next week.